Just my mind playing tricks on me again. Did you ever notice that your mind loves to play tricks on you? So does your body, as a matter of fact. My body loves to play tricks on me. Usually when I'm trying to impress somebody, you know? You ever have your saliva glands decide to overflow when you're trying to impress somebody? <laughs> What's happened to me? Yes, gentlemen, don't worry about this loan. I can pay it back. I'm in complete control of my... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I'm dribbling. <laughs> I haven't done that since I was a child. <laughs> or here's another one that happens. Usually when I'm having dinner with a woman that I really want to make an impression on. And everything's going real good. We're at the restaurant and it's nice and atmospheric and we're having a nice conversation and our personalities are really meshing and really clicking. And I'm talking to her and I'm doing good. You know, you can tell. I'm cooking along, boy, and everything's working good. And while I'm talking to her, my body decides to throw out a little piece of food. <laughs> Not a big chunk of meat, you know, just a little piece of food. And it doesn't throw it out so it clears my lip and drops in my lap. I mean, it throws it out. <laughs> so that it flies up through the air high enough to pick up all the light, you know? It becomes almost luminous. It looks like a comet flying through the air. And of course, you're both watching it. And you both watch it, and it always lands right on her plate. Oh. <laughs> Which is always a terrible dilemma, because I never know what, what should I do. Should I, should I call the wa oh, waiter? Waiter? I, I spit in my date's food. <laughs> a small spoon, maybe. Or what do I do? Do, do, I, do I pick it out? or what? Maybe, I'll get it. I'll get it. It's in the gravy, and I'll, my finger's clean. I'll just dip it in there and pick it out. I'll tell you, it's even worse dilemma when she doesn't see it. You know, because then I got to figure, should I tell her about it? <laughs> or should I let her read it? <laughs> Ah, to hell with her, let her eat it. <laughs> See, it's those little tricks that your body loves to play on you, you know? You always think, I always think the mind does control the body, and I think it does, but there's certain things that, that, that make me wonder. Like, when I get an itch, you know? If, if I get an itch, if the mind controls the body, you should be able to think it away, see? But I've never been able to do that. And there again, the body gives me an itch, uh, and usually in a very inaccessible place. <laughs> At a time when there's no way that I can get to it, you know? <laughs> Talking to a group of people in a hotel lobby, and I'll get the itch. It, 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 it's in a terrible place. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's, it's at the very top of the leg. Uh, at the, uh, on the very way inside of the thigh, where, where the thigh meets the torso. You know, know that area? It's the area where if the human body had a price tag, that's where it'd be. <laughs> And it's the one that, that you have to ac actually physically alter your position to get at. You know what I mean? You got to actually kind of go spread your legs and you got to go dip your hand way down and, and way under and come up from behind, making sure you don't touch anything. You see what I mean? Because you're seeking relief of a non sexual nature, you see. <laughs> Although you'd never know it by the sounds people make when they finally scratch it. It's the same sound. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. That feels good. It's the one you finally get when you think you're alone. You look up and there's a tour bus there. Oh, God. <laughs> and it's funny about itching because itching is one of those things that, that's, uh, that sort of defines the, the, the line between pain and pleasure, you know? Because it feels so good when you scratch it at first, but if you keep scratching it, then it becomes painful. It's a little fine line there that, that, that we cross sometimes. Because pleasure can sometimes become painful. I always thought that pleasure could be used as a weapon. Really? could be used as a weapon, especially in something like the area of interrogation. You're wasting your time. I ain't gonna talk. I have broken better men than you, Lieutenant Kincaid. Let's start with a simple question. Who wrote Beethoven's Fifth? My name is Butch Kincaid, Flight Lieutenant, United States Marine Corps, serial number 7798616. Oh, you're boring me, Lieutenant. Close. The chest. <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> Loves the nails. <laughs> so, Klaus has given you one of our Gestapo pedicures. Perhaps you're ready to talk. That tongue of yours is gonna get you in a load of trouble. Perhaps we should loosen it. Klaus? As you can see, we don't have any points to make you change your mind. Ha! Who says us Germans don't have a sense of humor? <laughs> now we talk, no? 
<laughs> Perhaps a little demonstration of the elasticity of the human tongue will make you change your mind. Okay, Klaus. Let her rip. <laughs> You leave me no choice, Lieutenant, but to use the ultimate torture. See this plug? You can take that plug and stick it up your... Oh, you know of this torture. <laughs> Klaus, plug it in. Now tell me, what is the bomb load of your aircraft? My name is Butch King. Klaus? Right, Lieutenant. <laughs> Are the locations of your forward airfield. My name is Butch King. Klaus! Right, Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, you're the toughest man I've ever had the pleasure of torturing. We've cut, broken, stripped, and prodded every part of your body. <laughs> That's right. And yet you laugh! And I'll keep on laughing until... Hey, don't do that, huh? Don't do what? <laughs> Come on, cut it out. Cut what out? This? <laughs> yeah, cut it out. Oh, tickly, shall we? Kitchy, kitchy, cool. Hey, no, come on now. The Geneva Convention. Says nothing about tickling. Klaus? Oh, oh, not my feet. Oh, God, I can't stand it. <laughs> I'll talk. Anything I tell you. Anything? Anything. Squadron. <laughs> 20, 25. What are your targets? <laughs> Fuel dogs. Fuel dogs. <laughs> How many gun emplacements on the front? <laughs> 13. <laughs> Not you, gun <dumb> cop. <laughs> Why is it every couple of months my closet looks like a stud form for wire hangers? <laughs> I don't believe it. They're like rabbits. I put a couple in there, I close the doors. A couple of days later, poof, there's thousands of them. <laughs> well, you guys are going back. Come on. Come on. weird if the last hanger was hooked to the wall <laughs> then I pulled real hard I could turn the house inside out <laughs> boy I've been living alone too long come on guys come on morning morning oh no not again huh? why can't you be like other people and just throw your hangers away why did you have to bring them all back to me because this is where I got them in the first place you get a chicken from the butchers but you don't take the bones back <laughs> You ever try to make a soup with these? <laughs> I'll just put these in the regular place, all right? Oh, and I got uh, some stuff to pick up. Right. Two pairs of trousers, three sweaters, eight shirts, and four ties. Yeah. Ooh. That's 28 pounds 50. Boy, that's a lot of money. I've got high overheads. There's rent and lights. So, oh, and hangers. Well, how much would it cost if I picked these clothes up without hangers? 78p. Oh, when I get taken to the cleaners, I get taken to the cleaners. All right. There you go. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, huh? See you next time. Oh, oh God, oh, I'm sorry. No. Oh, My brand new sweater. God, I'm sorry, miss. Hold on. Don't Watch out, watch out. I... Oh. oh, hi. What? I said, hi. Hi. Don't you remember me? We met at that charity dinner last week, remember? Oh, yes. I didn't recognize you without your revolving bow tie. Oh, that. <laughs> How are you? I'm oh, fine, fine. Uh, Sarah, right? You remembered. Remembered what? My name. What? No, right. Right what? Not right what, just right. What is this, me, Abbott, you, Costello? My name is Sarah Wright. W-R-I-G-H-T. All right, I got you now. Really, it's good to see you again. I'm sorry about your sweater. I feel terrible about the... Uh, Hey, what, why don't you let me make that up to you? Let me uh, take you out to lunch. Hmm, I don't know. After seeing what you do with hangers, I dread to think what you could do with a knife and fork. 
<laughs> well, I'll eat with my fingers. How's that? I got a better idea. Why don't you give me a number and I'll call you? Okay. Call me? <laughs> no. No, you got this wrong. I'm supposed to call you. Who says so? Uh, God. <laughs> really? It's right there in the Old Testament. Didn't you ever read it? Moses, when he went out looking for the Ten Commandments, where do you think Mrs. Moses was? Sitting at home, playing mahjong, waiting for him to call. <laughs> it's tradition. Man is a chaser, woman is a chaser. Uh, not this woman. And besides, I don't like to give my number to perfect strangers. Uh, 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 I'm not perfect. That's one thing we can definitely agree on. <laughs> now, are you going to give me your number or not? Well, all right. It's against my uh, chauvinistic principles, but I'll do it. Hey. How do I know you're gonna call me? You don't. That's the fun of it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Nine hangers when I left the shop, now there's 12. <laughs> Must have happened when I left them alone in the car. Hey, that might be Sarah. Hello. Oh, hi, Lyman. No, no, I'm not disappointed. I just thought it was somebody else. Oh, just a girl I met. No, 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 nobody famous, just, uh, just a plain girl. I mean, she's not plain, she's very lovely, but anyway, forget it. What's up? What, what photo session? Oh, I forgot all about that. Oh, uh, let me ask you something, Lyman. I mean, what are pictures of me doing aerobic exercises? How's that gonna sell tickets to my concerts, huh? I mean, all it's gonna get me is a lot of coverage in British medical journals. All right, you know your business. Okay, yeah, I got the particulars. I'll see you there then. Okay, yeah, bye. Damn. Just what I feel like doing, spending the afternoon doing California splits. <laughs> well, then again, I might meet somebody. Then again, I'm sick of just meeting somebody. <sighs> Gotta be more to life than just going out every night and drinking too much and meeting somebody and going home and spending the night. What, am I crazy? <laughs> it's a bachelor's dream. No, it's not what it's cracked up to be. It's just, especially on those nights when you drink too much and your vision is blurred and your standards start dropping. <laughs> Which, of course, you don't realize till the cold light of dawn. <laughs> when both the judgment and your vision and your standards return along with uh, absolute panic. <laughs> I guess the hardest thing for a man to accept today is that he's no longer the conqueror. In fact, these days, he's just as likely to be conquered. <laughs> Shakespeare said some pretty depressing things about alcohol and men, but I don't recall him saying anything about the effect of alcohol on women. For instance, with the right atmosphere and the right amount of alcohol, the shyest and most demure of women can become an unleashed tiger. <laughs> Yeah. Don't you think we should wait? Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> no, it's a nurse <laughs> taking my blood pressure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> evening. Mummy, what's they doing? Oh, she's my tailor. <laughs> this is an emergency fitting. <laughs> okay, just taking my inside to life. <laughs> Like you, Gail. It's gin talking, I swear. Oh, no, Gail, not my pet. <laughs> now, good evening. How are you? <laughs> Gail, my lease is up for renewal. Please. <laughs> Am I really ready for a relationship? Am I really ready for a responsibility of a commitment? What am I talking about? She hasn't even called. She probably has no intention of calling. Boy, of all the nerve, if you're going to take somebody's number, have the courtesy to call. I mean, how many times have I met a woman, taken her number, and never bothered to call? Thousands of times. <laughs> hey, I didn't write my name by that number. She might forget whose number it is, then she'll put it away someplace, find it a year from now, and call out of curiosity, and by then it'll be too late. I'll have a wife and a couple of kids. <laughs> Boy, was that a busy year. <laughs> oh, this is absurd. I'm not supposed to be hanging around waiting for her to call me. A woman is supposed to sit around waiting for a man to call her. That's why women have bigger hips. <laughs> oh, now, don't be silly. Don't be a sissy. Don't sit here like a sissy. Be a man. Yeah, play hard to get. That's what I'll do. I'll play hard to get. 
She'll call and I won't even be here. Oh. <laughs> Damn lock stuck. Damn it. Oh. Wait, wait. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> Sarah? <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> no, I just sat down on a spike. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, how are you? <laughs> What's new? <clears throat> well, that's true. Not a lot can happen in two hours. <laughs> uh, so, um, um, so, uh, haba, haba, haba. <clears throat> haba, haba, haba. <laughs> just some new song lyrics I'm working on. Um, well, how about that lunch? Oh, great, great, good. When? Today? Oh, uh, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, today's fine. Um, okay. Well, how about Mario's? You know that restaurant? Great. Well, I'll meet you there then, huh? Super, okay. Bye. What the hell am I gonna wear? I don't believe it. Four more hangers. <laughs> well, let's see, what am I gonna wear? Is this too coordinated? I don't want to look too coordinated. I don't mind being a little bit coordinated, but not too coordinated, you know? I mean, I went through that phase with a vengeance. Here we are. It's, uh, just had my flat redecorated. And, uh, I did it all myself, actually. Oh, this is amazing. Huh? Your sofa is the same tartan as your jacket. <laughs> and the cushions match your trousers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a thing with me. <laughs> oh, the lampshade. Is, uh, the same as my jacket. <laughs> Sit down, sit down, please. Can I get you a little drink? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, yes. I've never seen anything like this before. Well, actually, that's one reason that uh, I was so attracted to you, was your coloring sort of uh, went right in with my flat. <laughs> among other things. I can't believe this. Your bed matches your T-shirt. And your sheets and pillows match your shirt and trousers. <laughs> Everything's coordinated. <laughs> that's right. Everything. Oh my God, it's Tartan. You know, I, I really should get her something to make up for tearing her sweater. Nothing big, just a little something, a little, hmm. Uh, perfume, yeah, yeah. Can I help you, sir? Um, yeah, I'm uh, just looking for some perfume. For a wife, a sweetheart, a mistress. A uh, contender. Oh. Does she like a light perfume or a heavy perfume? Um, a uh, light perfume with um, overtones of heaviness. <laughs> How about this? Uh. No, I think it's the overtones are a little too heavy in this. Well. Try this one. Yeah. Very popular with the younger woman. Oh. Smells like bubble gum. <laughs> Too young. Mm. Look, what about this? This is our most passive scent. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I don't smell anything. Too passive. <laughs> what about this one? This is our newest scent from Japan. Ah. Mm. Smells like one night in a Toyota. <laughs> What's that called? One night in a Toyota. <laughs> what about this? We sell a lot of this. <laughs> no. No. What's wrong? Too strong? No, it smells like my deodorant. <laughs> That's it. That's the one right there. That's the one. That's the one we started with. <laughs> well, I'm, um, I'm sure glad you called me because uh, I just wanted to... Uh, oh, sorry. As I was saying... What was I saying? Uh, you were saying that you were just... Oh. Sorry. Why'd you keep saying that? Saying what? Sorry. Was I? Uh, I'm sorry. I... There you go again. I'm sorry, it's a habit, you know? It's a habit I picked up here. See, in America, we don't say sorry a lot. We say, excuse me. Excuse me? Sorry? Damn. <laughs> here I go again. 
I bet when I die, my tombstone's gonna say, oh, sorry, is this in your way? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. But I am sorry about your, about your sweater. Would you please stop apologizing? It's done. I know, I know, but just the same, I, uh, well, I got you a little something to make up for it. I know. Perfume. <laughs> How'd you know that? Well, when I first got here, I thought, either he's been shopping for perfume, or I've made one hell of a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't made a mistake. Here. I hope you like that. Oh, I love it. Pure Parmigiano. It's my favorite smell. Pure Parmigiano is your favorite smell? No, no, no. Scandoli on table nine says his fish smells fun. What's he mean, smell fun? Amazing. First salmon I ever smell wearing perfume. It's nice. <laughs> And uh, so, as the saying goes, the, uh, the rest is history. Boy, must be a sure sign of getting older, you know? Used to be I could tell my life story before the soup. <laughs> now it takes me the entire meal, three coffees and a brandy, and I still left out those four years in prison. What? I knew that would wake you up. I wasn't bored. Well, all I've done is talk about myself. I don't know anything about you. We'll save that for next time. Oh, nice to know there'll be a next time. When? I'll call you. Better yet, I'll call you. That would be difficult. You haven't got my number. Say, are you married? Are you kidding? <laughs> Living with somebody? A cat and a minor bird called Gormley. <laughs> you uh, working for MI5? No. Uh, ah, you didn't pay your bill and they cut you off. Mm, no. Well, I can't figure it out. Why won't you give me your phone number? Why is it so important to you? So I can call you, that's yes, why. I've told oh, you already. Excuse me, please, sir. I wonder, please, could you take care of this? It's ten to four, and the kitchen is... Ten stopped. to four? Oh, my God! I'm supposed to meet Andre in ten minutes. Andre, eh? You really pack him in. Oh, no, no. No, Andre runs an exercise class, you see, and my publicity man has arranged a photo session with her. It'll, it'll be a, a, a piece of cake. This is Tony Louds of the new Keep Fit magazine, What Pain. Oh, well, nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, well, uh, what do you want me to do here? Oh, we have this regular feature on how various celebrities keep fit. So far, we've done Barbara Cartland doing press-ups and Robert Morley doing Jane Fonda's exercises. <laughs> yeah, just want a couple of shots of you and Andre doing some aerobic exercises. Oh, OK. Uh, sounds good. Hello, Andrea. Hi. This is Kelly Monteith. Oh, hi. hi. I feel like I know you already. I've watched all your telly shows. Oh, good. Do you mind if I ask you a question? I know, I know. I look taller on television. No. How come you never get the girls? What? The girls. On your show, you never get the girls. Is it like that in real life? Well, no, but um, I'm only allowed to show my failures on TV, not my uh, moments of triumph. Oh, I'd like to have some. Well, you ought to come up and see my trophy case sometime. <coughs> Shall we start? Oh. OK, Kelly, why don't you go and put a leotard on? Leotard? Everyone who does aerobics wears a leotard. Now, I just want some simple shots of you and Andrea doing basic aerobic exercises. <laughs> Such a stunt. That's it. Now, let's see you stretch it. That's it. Good. Good. Oh, I love it. Love it. Now, give me a big smile. Come on, have fun with it. Hold that. Beautiful. Love the face. Beautiful. Wonderful. Amazing. Wow. What a great shot for a poster for birth control. Nice. I like it. Like it. Oh. Oh. There. Feel better? Well, I don't know about the better, but there is some feeling coming back. Oh, well, boy. for somebody who's never done any aerobics at all, I thought you were very, very good. What a good teacher. Thank you. But there's one place right in the middle of my back... Hurts. ...that feels good. <laughs> the rest of it feels like I was beaten by croquet mallets. Oh, oh, that feels great. My relaxing massage. Oh. You know I couldn't get one of these in a massage parlor? Mm hmm Yeah, if I asked for a regular massage, they'd think I was a pervert. Mm. <laughs> a therapeutic massage? What's like that? this? Mm, oh, yeah. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> What is that, Marquis de Sade therapy? <laughs> or does the uh, sensual massage? Sensual massage? Mm -hmm. What is uh, what is a sensual massage? It's all in my new book. 
Sexual aerobics for sensual people. Sexual aerobics? What is that? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> so, how do we start? Well, we start with mutual attraction. Yeah, and then? And then? Are you sure you're ready for this? I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, let me turn on the tape. Right. Right. Yeah. First we hold each other. Uh-huh. And yeah. then we do this. This? Oh, well, that's, uh, that's normal. And then, when our hearts start to thump... Oh, it's thumping, it's thumping. We start the sexual aerobics. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> One, two, and three, and four, and change position. And one, and... Oh, wait! Two, three, and four, and one. Hey, you beat me here! I couldn't help it. You goose me. Ooh, does not feel good. I think I just hurt myself. Hey, hello. How are you? Uh oh. Trouble. <gasps> I feel cold hands. That means only one thing. <laughs> Sir, how's the back feel now, Mr. Monty? Oh, well, there is some sensation returning. Good. You made medical history. Huh? You were the first man ever to suffer whiplash during foreplay. <laughs> one of those things. All part of my plan for change, you know? I'm tired of those... those wham-bam, thank-you-ma'am, casual kind of relationships. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, is he full of it. <laughs> yeah, I want more substance, you know, more depth. I want the serenity that comes with true spiritual values. I'm tired of these casual, empty relationships. I... <laughs> what are you doing later on tonight, huh? huh? Parlez-vous anglais? Uh, I know this great little pub out of the way. It's in, in the middle of nowhere, and nobody was... Hey, no, I'm just kidding. I don't do <laughs> I was just joking. I was kidding. Hey, please. Don't leave me hanging like this. <laughs>